forward to answering any of your questions. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Members uh, will now be recognized by seniority for their five minutes of questioning. An additional round of questioning may be called after all members have been recognized, and I now recognize myself for five minutes. Um, appreci I appreciate the service and what, what y'all do, and especially your partnership with the state and the local levels. And I, I think I want to start, you know, just by trends and ask uh, each of you quickly, are there areas, geographic areas, cities, that seem to have higher rates of organized retail crime uh, that are being impacted? And I'll start with you, Mr. Cole, we just go down the line. Thank you, sir, for that question. Um, you know, I, I, we see the polycriminal transnational organizations uh, now no longer tied to a single criminal scheme or enterprise. Uh, what we do see is, you know, organized retail crime uh, groups uh, involved in, in certain, you know, methods and methodologies. Uh, I think they are driven by greed and opportunity, not so much location and okay. geographic region. Mr. K, Mr. Perez, quickly, any, any areas that you see that are being impacted um, disproportionately? Uh, I, I would say no areas in particular. Um, I, I agree with the HSI SAC that I think they're geographical and they tend to take the exploitation where those opportunities can be exploited, i.e., for example, uh, gas pump skimming, which was a huge thing several years yep. back. I-95 seemed to be the corridor. There was no direct location. Mr. Perez. So similar comments, our offices around the country, we have nine major theft task forces. These were developed by individual field offices. They really vary in range from Los Angeles, Memphis, Pittsburgh to West Texas, Sur, and El Paso, where we've established an organized crime task force as well. Uh, th this is deferred to by, by our local field offices. I can't speak to one area more than another. We see various trends as mentioned in one corridor. I've seen fuel, uh, theft, fuel, uh, a theft of fuel in West Texas, sir, in, in, in your area that are significant, that, that uh, leads us to establish local partnerships to target some of these unique threats. What about felony thresholds? Um, have you seen state by state or jurisdiction by jurisdiction or action from DAs that have led to increases? So let's say the raising of a felony threshold, has that had a effect on the number of uh, organized retail crime um, events that you, you see? Sir, I can't speak to that. Okay, any, any other on the panel? No, sir. Okay. No, sir. Um, well, let's go to the, the, for the Secret Service, Mr. Kane. When, when does the Secret Service, what does the Secret Service see as the largest threat to maintaining a safe environment for financial trans transactions, whether it be credit cards, gift cards, U.S. currency? Um, you know, what, what is, kind of talk me through that. I think obviously with the holidays hitting, it's high volume and uh, places like convenience stores and um, gas stations seem to be the best because they can get a lot of numbers very quickly. Uh, second, kind of on the edge of new things are what they call uh, quishing, which is like the scanning of QR codes, which are not actual QR codes. They actually will take you to a site and ask you to apply uh, information, personal information, that's a new one. And then gift card fraud, which is happening a little bit more prevalently where people are taking gift cards, re-encoding them in the back, activating them very quickly with limits amounts of money, but then when you go to actually buy the gift card, you're loading the dollar up. Mm -hmm. So combating that is a little tough. It's a bit more heavy on the retailers. Uh, and then at the local level, the convenience store level, it's just really on the locals. Again, uh, the person using these AT, uh, ATM slash sliders, uh, they need to make sure that those devices are, are legitimate uh, as best they can. We always say, give it a tug. It might come apart. You never know. Um, Mr. Kroll, we're talking about Operation Boiling Point focused on combating this, this uh, organized retail crime trend, how many organized retail crime investigations has HSI's Boston field office conducted? And can you identify any red tape or roadblocks that have stood in the way between effective partnerships with the state and local level? Thank you for that question. Uh, we do have active investigations uh, ongoing now. I uh, don't have a historical number, uh, but certainly uh, those that are uh, international in scope, um, and, and ones that involve our federal, state, and local partners uh, spread throughout New England. Uh, what I will say, I, I don't see any red tape. What I see is just the, the necessity to prioritize the myriad of, of crimes that we see as federal agents. Uh, you know, we see kind of three tiers of, of retail crime. One, your single scope uh, who may, you know, uh, steal out of necessity to your more coordinated uh, groups who might not. Uh, reach in interstate commerce, and then three, which is where I think federal agents should be, is the more sophisticated networks 
uh, those that are involved in cyber-enabled crime and maybe yep. you know some more uh, sophisticated methodologies. But we do see uh, the gap between one and two with our state, local, and private sector partners, which, sir, to your point, is why we are, established. Are these events deterring or scaring the public? Is it something that's scaring the public and deterring businesses from having open stores in, in different places? Sir, what I could say is, uh, you know, obviously the uh, the awareness of the crime uh, has been certainly something uh, that we've seen much more of, uh, whether in the media or within law enforcement. And I think the awareness of the crime is something that's going to help us uh, to to attack those networks and make sure that we have an impact.